Um, we'd like to welcome everyone to this sort of off quarterly meeting partner group. Um, we realized that when we got together in June, most people would have their um, summer programs solidified um, really through the whole summer. So we thought we'd take this opportunity to kind of talk a little bit about what's going on this summer for programs to see if there's anything we should know about each other's programs or anything we can share um, in terms of either responsibility or audience connections, which would be great. Um, and so we have two people with us today. Um, Jennifer Zanoli is the new outreach coordinator from the um, New Bedford Whaling Museum. One of the fun things about coming out of the pandemic is you get to meet all the new people um, who have come into town um, since we've started this um, dreadful little um, be in our own little silo thing. So Jennifer is going to talk to us about some new policies and opportunities at the Whaling Museum. And then um, Elise Raposa is also coming on to speak about the um, ARPA um, um, opportunities from the um, city of New Bedford. Um, she is the um, somewhat um, I, I can't believe the work that's going to be done, the, but she is the organizer and the administrator of the ARPA money, the American Recovery Plan Act money, um, which is coming to New Bedford, and there are lots of different places that goes in lots of different ways that's accessible. So, so Jennifer, I sort of introduced you as the new outreach coordinator, but do you want to say a little bit about your roles and responsibilities and then go into the presentation you're going to show us? Yeah, absolutely. So hello, everyone. So nice to meet you all. So my name is Jennifer Zanoli, and I arrived at the New Bedford Whaling Museum back in November, and I'm in a new position at, for the museum, and my official title is Director of Museum Experience and Community Outreach. So as part of that um, title, I oversee kind of front of house operations, looking at how we are welcoming and engaging our visitors in the galleries, um, I look at visitor services, I look at the museum store, and as well as overseeing our rentals program. So I do also want to introduce uh, Chanda Saar, um, who is also fairly new to the New Bedford Whaling Museum, and you'll see her photo later on in my presentation as well, but I just wanted to give a shout out that she is a real live person um, here today with us. All right. So let me go and share my screen. So what I'm gonna be doing an overview of today is an, um, kind of a revised version of our community partner rental program that we have here at the museum. And kind of going through what this is and answering questions around it. So first off, what is our community partner rental program? So this is a program that allows local nonprofits to rent one of the New Bedford Whaling Museum's nine venue spaces at a significant discount for up to four hours. And this is a program that has been available for several years, um, but it was standardized back in 2020 as a way to increase transparency and consistent use of the program. I think before my understanding is that Sometimes certain partners were getting one rate and another partner might be getting another based off of who they talked to at the New Bedford Whaling Museum, which is obviously not our ideal way of handling partner requests. So we wanted to make sure that whoever was asking was getting a consistent discount. And it's quite a discount, which I'll go over. Um, and over on the left-hand side, you can see a, a gallery view map of the spaces in the museum. I will be going through each of the spaces in a little bit more detail, but all of the areas in blue are areas that you could potentially rent at the museum. So, and just to quickly go over kind of how our community partner rate is different than a typical rental that we have. Obviously, I mentioned that you would be getting a significant discount, which I'll be going through more detail in a little bit. But normally for people that are renting the museum space, it is a revenue generating program. Um, we generally charge our rentals per hour. And then we also charge for additional use of museum equipment. Um, so you can see over uh, again on the left hand side, these are our normal rates of what we are charging per hour for people to rent our space versus our community partner rate really is not a revenue generating source for the museum. It is only covering the cost of hosting the event on site at the museum. 
And instead of charging our partners per hour, we charge for every four hours, there's a block, and then any museum equipment that our partners use is free to use. Um, one way that these two programs are similar is that there are different rates depending on when you are using the museum space. So in the next several slides, you will see um, the rate for renting the museum on a Thursday after hours for an AHA event, for instance. So just to quickly go through the various spaces, um, on our first floor level, our ground level, you have our entrance plaza and you have our coffee um, park. You know, these are two great outdoor spaces to use and to rent them at our community partner rate would be $700. Then as we move indoors, um, we have our Cook Memorial Theater, which is our largest venue on site. It can hold up to 237 people seated. And then we also ha have outside of the Cook Memorial Theater, Jacob's Family Gallery, um, which has the iconic wheel skeletons above you. And again, to rent both of those spaces at our community partner rate would be $700. Then as we move up to our main level venues, we have four additional spaces. There's the Brinkmeyer Family Gallery, which is kind of a smaller, more intimate space. It does have my favorite window in the museum, which looks out to the whale skeletons. Um, and then you have our Lagoda and Bourne building. And those are both, again, $700 to rent. Then a little bit further into the museum, I think this will probably be less of a space that you would use for an AHA event, but I just wanted to make you all aware that we do have two great uh, conference areas or classroom spaces. We have our media lab conference room and our science classroom, and these are $600 to rent because they're a little bit smaller. Now we're moving up to our third level of the museum. We have our San Francisco room and our Davis observation deck. Um, these are ones that you rent together and again would be $600 if you want to do a program in this space. And then of course you have Harborview Gallery, um, which is one of our bigger venue spaces at the museum and that would be $700 to rent. And it does have this beautiful Harborview Terrace where you can look out to New Bedford Harbor. So for AHA specifically, um, I just wanted to go over kind of, you know, you see one of these spaces, you're interested in having an event or collaborating with the museum, who should you reach out to? Um, so Jocelyn News, who I'm sure you are all familiar with, as well as Carissa Walker are still your first and best points of contacts. Um, for anything related to AHA at the New Bedford Whaling Museum. And then what will happen is that you might end up getting connected to either myself or Chanda, depending on what ends up kind of happening with the request. But really the first and best point of contact is both of those colleagues. But we are all here to assist you. So we have Jocelyn's email, Carissa's email. So again, your two best people, but then you also have Chanda and myself um, here and happy to answer questions. Hi, this is Eric from your theater. Uh, what it, what are these uh, rates posted on your website? Good question. So right now they are not posted on our website and, and actually none of the prices for renting the space are. What we have been trying to do is when basically somebody reaches out to either Jocelyn or Chanda, we provide this information, but we are looking at kind of making this available on our website just for clarity. Um, however, if you want to reference back, I'm happy to kind of share through Margo this PowerPoint presentation or just share with everyone so you have it readily available. Jennifer, are those prices for AHA events only, or is that for any partner event hosted in the space? Thank you, Lindsay, for asking. So those are for any community partner event that's happening in that space. Again, that is the, the price that was shown was for a Sunday through Friday after hours event. 
So there are different rates if you're doing like an event on a Saturday. Um, but again, I wanted to kind of make it very clear in terms of for just specifically AHA. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. It had come up in a discussion that we were trying to put the toe jam on the plaza. And we have done that before without um, paying a fee. So that fee came up. So that's why it's kind of aha focus. But I think it's good news for um, good information for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And again, everything, you know, I, I, I did mention, but I'll just reinforce again. This is really meant to just cover like the staff costs of using the museum space. It's not a revenue generating source for us. So there's still a significant kind of discount that all of our partners are receiving. And then I don't want this to necessarily be seen as um, that the museum stops wanting to kind of collaborate and have, you know, these partnerships for AHA activities and events. That's why Jocelyn and Carissa are still your first best points of contact. And then they can figure out, is this something that really complements what the museum is doing for AHA? Do we have the space available? Is this a partnership program or is this really more of a, a venue usage? So for instance, when, when you say partnership, um, yeah. are you talking about AHA partners or are you talking about any community organization or? Yeah, so for, I was think, speaking specifically for AHA, but still, if you're planning on a public program, Jocelyn is still your best point of contact at the museum. Um, but if you're saying, hey, I wanna do this staff retreat at the museum and really wanna use one of their spaces, then that's more of a, a Chanda request that you would go directly to her. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. Great. So as a partnership, will do you foresee that you will still have open and free hours on AHA night for people to come see the exhibits? Or does that yes. turn into a rental? Okay. Great. Yeah, so I think that's gonna be part of our um, activities that we are hosting for AHA, right? Where we are making it available to the public to come and visit for free and explore the galleries or do our new whale scavenger hunt or some other type of activity. I think what I'm thinking about is, you know, say if the museum decides to host a music related event for AHA and you know of a great um, musician that you think would be a good person for that. Again, I would still connect with Jocelyn and she might be like, hey, this would fit perfectly with our theme for September. And again, I think that would be slightly different than if you're just like, hey, I wanna do, I'm trying to think of a very- Jam, toe Jam Puppet Band. Toe Jam Puppet Band, you know? Like that may not be something that the museum relates to what we're doing at the moment. So that would be kind of more of a community rental than just a pure collaboration. Okay, that makes sense. Could I jump in quick? It's Jocelyn. Yeah, Jocelyn. <laughs> just a couple of things. I know that um, Jennifer has referenced Carissa. I'm not sure if many of AHA members and Seaport Cultural District members are familiar what she's referring to. Carissa is the new public programs associate at the museum. So she works sort of side by side with me. That's why we're mentioning Carissa as well. She's sort of a new name, I think, for most of you. Um, but she will also be, like Jennifer mentioned, sort of at that fielding process for any inquiry about space or um, a potential program that might take place at the museum. Um, one important note that I do want to mention, um, and I hope I'm not stepping on your toes, Jennifer, is that the community partner rate, much like she mentioned, is very discounted, but it's about 75 to 85% discounted from our regular rates. So it is a very steeply discounted number, um, and that's because we want to be able to continue that partnership with our community, AHA included. Mm -hmm. um, and then the only other mention that I believe I had, and now it's slipping my mind. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna just stop because I forgot the last one, but if I remember, I'll pop back in. <laughs> Thanks, Jocelyn. Thank you. I'm sorry, I, are there... I have one comment that I just I do want. also have a comment. Okay, Lee, um, you go first. So the Historical Society is working in collaboration right now with the Whaling Museum for the Underground Railroad Sailing to Freedom event. So that will be in the gallery 
until really November. So how will free evenings work for that? Is that free evenings on AHA night um, for members of the greater New Bedford area? How will that work? So actually that was my third point and you just reminded me, I think somebody had asked if we would, I think it was Lee Blake asked if we would remain open. Um, so that would might, it might look different each month. Um, our plan and we're still talking through and developing this a little bit more is that we will remain open four to seven, but it might not be every single gallery. It might not be the entire museum right now, say for tomorrow night, we have the lower level open, but also really featuring our Waddles family gallery exhibition, because that one is one that was just sort of opened. Um, so that's the one that we're really featuring, but that might look different a different month. So it could be that, you know, once we open the Sailing to Freedom exhibition, Lee, um, that next month on the Thursday for AHA, that we open the museum and that specific gallery is the one that's featured for people to go see. Um, so it might look a little bit different each month, but it is something that we are working through to open up galleries throughout AHA throughout the year. Jennifer, pop in if I'm missing anything. No, I think that's great. The only other thing that I'll add um, to Lee's question in terms of like free versus um, paid and when that's available, um, I do have a new kind of website that details all of the discounts that the museum provides um, just for general admission. And I'm gonna put that in the chat so everyone has access to it in case you're curious. Um, one of the discounts that we provide every single day is it's half off to visit the museum um, if you are a New Bedford resident. And then if you are um, a fellow museum professional or community professional, you're welcome to visit for free at any point. So I'm just going to put that link there. You can see over 20 um, discounts that the museum provides. I just have a comment, Lee. So Jennifer I, and Jocelyn, I appreciate I appreciate that you've explained the discount and that it is very discounted. I just want to go on the record saying that this still prices out a lot of the smaller nonprofit arts and cultural organizations. So, um, you know, but it does sound like if someone has a great idea that is in alignment with the Whaling Museum that they still should reach out to Jocelyn to see if they can collaborate in some way. Okay, great. All right, I'm nodding my head and realize I'm on mute. Yes, yeah, that would still be the way to do that. And again, this is this is not meant to, to price at anyone, though I completely understand as well that for a lot of us, um, in nonprofits, it's certainly, you know, maybe a different arrangement than what you've previously had with the New Bedford Whaling Museum. Um, and again, I think one thing that I just want to mention is it might be different than what you've had previously with the New Bedford Whaling Museum, but it was something that was established with other nonprofits. So again, this is hoping just to create that consistency and that transparency in terms of what it costs to actually host an event at the museum versus being like, oh, let me try to reach out to Jennifer and see if I can get a special super discount. Um, we don't want to do that. We don't want to play favorites with all of our partners. We want to just be able to say, hey, this is what we are charging. And this is, you know, we want to kind of be good community partners to everyone. Um, that makes sense. Margo, do you want to introduce um, Elise? Um, sure. So let me introduce myself first. Yes, there you go. This Sorry. is, uh, <laughs> if you don't know who I am, so I'm Margo Saulnier. I'm the creative strategist with New Bedford Creative. We manage the city's arts and culture plan, the implementation of it. And I'm also the manager of the Seaport Cultural District, which is the footprint, uh, larger footprint of the downtown area. So that's my role today. And we invited Elise Raposa, who is the director of ARPA for the city of New Bedford to come and speak today about a press release that was sent out yesterday afternoon. Uh, so Elise, the floor is yours. Okay, if I share my screen as well. Sure, hold on one second. Let me um, 
just make you a co-host so you should be able to share your screen now great i'm just gonna share the arpa website um for all those for any of you who don't already know, uh, ARPA stands for the American Rescue Plan Act, which was enacted by Congress in March of 2021, which provides a substantial infusion of funds to respond to the health and economic impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, decisions on how ARPA is, fun is being, um, what the funding priorities would be have been determined through a collaborative process between community members, city department heads, city council, um, the mayor's input, and some forums and surveys and things of that nature. So we've announced us where um, the um, arts and culture sector is um, an a strategic, I'm sure you all are aware of, <laughs> is a of a strategic importance to the Bedford economy. And as such, it's getting um, a large portion of the um, ARPA funds dedicated to it. Um, there are a number of programs that, in addition to the programs specifically for arts and culture, there are other programs that arts and culture organizations are eligible for that are brought more broadly available to businesses and organizations throughout New Bedford. For example, the Enhanced Facade Improvement Program. Uh, we recently announced a ch um, that that program uh, funds up to $40,000 for improvements to the exterior of commercial buildings in New Bedford. And the um, there was recently announced a change to that program. It used to be a 25 match across the board, 25% match. Now that match only applies to any funding request over 10,000, and it only applies to the amount that's in excess of $10,000. Um, so, and I think uh, that was an important change to make that more accessible to smaller organizations, especially renters who might not want to invest in a building that they don't own. Um, well, just so you all, I'm going to put the link to this website in the chat so you all have access to it. Um, this has um, links to all the ARPA funded programs. I'm sure you all heard about uh, the funding for the Z. Um, that the Zyterian is a city owned building, so um, it got it, we were, it got special treatment because we're personally responsible for it and it hasn't gotten much attention in a really long time. And so the um, cost of the um, the total cost of the repairs are going to be $23 million. And so we're actually finding a small percentage of that, even though that $5 million uh, figure seems quite large. <laughs> um, the, uh, the one that was announced yesterday is the capital investments at privately owned cultural facilities. You can see we intentionally use the words privately owned here to indicate that this is money that's available for organizations outside uh, that the city doesn't own and, and that we're not responsible for. So it's broadly available to the public. Um, we're starting this process um, and it's gonna be a because we're anticipating a large degree of interest in this and we wanna get it right the first time. So people aren't wasting time on applications that might be rejected for trivial issues because they're not in compliance with the federal ARPA regulations. Uh, we're going to do an expression of interest process first. You can get feedback um, from me. <laughs> so everyone kind of everyone gets the inside track. You all get to work directly with me to try to craft an application that um, has a higher chance of success. Um, and so um, I'll open that link. So the expression of interest is optional, but it is highly encouraged. Um, so that way we can make sure what you're proposing fits within what the federal government allows, because any money that's spent that is not a permissible use of funds, we have to return to the treasuries and that's no fun. Um, this expression of interest will be open for one month, so applications, um, expressions of interest are due June 10th, and then I will go through those and get back to um, each organization that submitted individually with um, eligibility and other feedback. So, um, what can it be used for? It can be used for capital investments that allow you to operate in this, a pandemic environment, such as indoor air quality improvements, enhancements that enable greater use of outdoor spaces, and audiovisual equipment that enable hybrid events, so remote participation in live events. 
Um, this is particularly important when we think about how many young children who can't be vaccinated yet or um, the pe people who are immune um, deficient, allowing those parts of our population to still be able to participate as we become do more and more live events. It can also be used for um, improvements that some of you may be aware of through the Massachusetts Underlies Massachusetts Development Underlies Underutilized Properties Program. Sorry, it's a mouthful. Um, and this is um, just general building improvements that um, are essential to the occupancy or increased occupancy of existing structures. So general um, building stability, roof repair. Um, we, we are allowing HVAC improvements, but you have to show those HVAC improvements will um, kind of remove COVID, like lessen COVID concentrations in the air through their use. Um, ADA compliance, compliance with fire and building code, uh, fire and building code regulations, and adapting a space for a new purpose. So, who uh, is eligible? So, this is open to any New Bedford-based nonprofit or for-profit organizations. Um, it's not just open to nonprofit, but the for-profit organizations really have to demonstrate that they're serving a community purpose, that this isn't, that there'll be a community benefit that's widely available um, for free to the public and not just um, a private benefit. Um, and then we're defining um, cultural facilities to mean building structures or sites that are operated by cultural organizations. And those cultural organizations are defined to mean um, organizations that enable public access to and participation with the arts, history, and humanities, as well as organizations that help pr preserve and promote the customs and cultural heritage of a group or groups of people. Now, how, um, but there's more, there's a little bit more to it than this, because this is COVID money. So unless you're proposing purely COVID mitigation measures, in which that's eligible just by itself, if you're going beyond that and, and doing things that aren't directly related to the health impacts of the pandemic, you have to demonstrate an economic impact. You have to show that you are pers your organization was personally um, financially impacted by the pandemic and that you haven't already been reimbursed for those, um, compensated for those impacts through other federal funding programs, such as um, the Paycheck Protection Program, CARES and others. Um, uh, and it can only be used for capital, but it can't be used for operating expenses. There will be a match. Right now, the match is set at 25%. This could change. Um, the minimum award that you can ask for is $100,000. The max is $400,000. And then you add onto that the match. We're talking about total project costs between $125,000 and $500,000. So that's base, uh, basically at... I might as well get a little bit into the review criteria. So in addition to assessing um, compliance with the goals and restrictions of the um, ARPA program, um, we are looking at um, whether the, the benefit that these improvements will have for your organization and New Bedford in, as a whole in our arts and culture industries. Um, and th things like uh, um, equity considerations in terms of disadvantaged populations in New Bedford that are being served, the design, whether it looks good, <laughs> and um, you can all, uh, things like landscaping can also be a, uh, an environmental improvement for, for managing stormwater and things of that nature. And then environmental considerations such as electrification. A lot of people, I don't think, realize that heating with electricity is actually the cheaper way to go now um, because of improvements. Uh, to technology such as um, heat pumps and the use of more durable building materials. We're not talking about having to replace this, um, any improvements 10 years from now. Um, so that was a quick run through. Uh, you can read the full application online. I'm happy to work with you, each of you individually to answer any questions and I'm happy to take any of your questions now. Louise? Um, yes. <laughs> Do you know what the approval process on these requests is going to be? Is there a committee? And please tell me it doesn't have to go to city council. <laughs> it, does not, it does not have to go to city council. Um, there will be a review committee that'll be about 50% um, uh, community members and 50% city staff. Um, it might end up being slightly more community members, but that's roughly the ratio we're looking for. Um, the 
and then um we we generally don't want um are going to be looking just for it depends how much interest there is so hopefully we'll just be able to say yes to everyone because there's enough funding as long as you meet the eligibility requirements but if the um if the interest exceeds the amount of funding that's available we may have to use some of these evaluation criteria to prioritize the, the projects that are going to have a bigger benefit um, to new bedford pop uh, the new bedford population writ large and not just your individual organization um, so at least this is lee how much is in that line still is it 11 million after the decision? yeah is it yeah. after or is it so so there was like it's all a little funky uh because the city council took out the county money and decided to treat that separately um right there is i want to say roughly six million um um it uh, um saw and some it's not clear at this point how much funding is going to be available for this program um but it's definitely going to be in the millions <laughs> okay do you have a sense when the application is going to be ready it says i think it said on the website that right. it's not ready yet no so it's gonna, like i said there's going to be the, uh, the final application is going to be informed by the expression of interest process if there are things that weren't clear like Basically, I'm going to learn from my mistakes <laughs> with this expression of interest and apply whatever I learned to writing the final application. Um, and so I would say about a month after the, so sometime in July, I would expect that the final, towards the end of July, the final application will be made available. And is there a, a deadline by which the money has to be spent? Are you? Doing yes. So this is only it's very there are um, time restrictions on the use of ARPA funding so we're only looking for projects that can begin construction within one year of receiving award and then um, all the money has to be obligated that is to say we have grant agreements with different organizations by the end of 2024 and then all money has to be spent so that means like you're done with whatever construction you're doing or purchasing whatever equipment you need to buy um by the end of 2026 and then whatever is not spent we have to return so um, hi elise i have a question um uh wendy hall with new bedford festival theater so um, so when you know when the city budget passed and it was arts and culture will get 11 million dollars that line item is that separate like is that what this specific um um is, is that what you were just talking about? Is that what yep. this is for? Or is arts and culture spread over um, the small business assistance? Yep. And That's right. So it, it's a little bit of both. So this particular program, it's just squarely within that arts and culture budget that was discussed with the um, city council. But there will be other arts and culture programs that will come okay. out of other program, other categories. So um, there um, I don't want to scoop myself because there will be an announcement along these lines. Um, but th whatever announcement you guys hear about next will be coming out of the business assistance category. <laughs> okay, just just because our organization, we aren't a bricks and mortar. Uh, you know, we are the yeah. we're the resident company at the Zaitarian, yeah. so we're not bricks and mortars. Right. So you know, we're just trying to find out right. is there so there will should be we hop on something now or should we? <laughs> It depends whether you're doing capital or if you're doing operating expenses. Okay. Um, or projects. Um, as, uh, um, we have an open solicitation right now for provision of small business support services. That's another one that's broadly available to businesses throughout New Bedford, although there may be some that are more targeted. Um, and that is, um, so that you wouldn't be applying to the city for funding. Once we announce who's going to be managing those funds for us, you would be applying to those organizations um, for those operating and project based um, types of um, funding. Okay, thank you very much. Hi, uh, Elise, this is Eric from Steeple Playhouse. I was curious, there are multiple programs that um, would apply to us in particular. 
Um, but if any organization decided to apply to multiple parts of this, uh, is there a part of the scoring system that um, might reflect negatively upon your next award if you're given right. an award in a different category? Mm, yes and no. So no to that specific question, but there are elements of yes in that um, matching, you're matching funds for the different programs. You can't match ARPA with ARPA. <laughs> So, <laughs> so we won't be allowing that. And then also you need to demonstrate as part of the review process that you're not just going for the easy money, that you've, you have, you've tried getting money from other sources and um, that you're actively fundraising and not just relying on this one program to accomplish what you want to accomplish. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yes, thank you. And so you're going to be you're going to keep rolling out deadlines, right? Yep. So we've made oh my gosh, five announcements of different funding programs. There's going to be I think there's going to be at least four more and there'll be I think I can say there's going to be one more that's I think everyone should know this. Um, that is for capital projects that could pertain to some of your organizations and that or people that you organizations that you're um, partners with and that is funding for the renovation of vacant and abandoned properties and this is we're thinking about like large important cultural facilities and other types of um, buildings in new bedford that have just sat in disrepair much to everyone's dismay and broken hearts and trying to get those back into productive use nice And that will be a larger, that will have a higher cap on it. Higher cap that you will be able to apply for more money. Yes, for the vacant, vacant and abandoned properties. Okay. Um, great. Um, so um, we meet in June also because that's our real quarterly meeting. And so we would invite you to come back if you'd like. We'll be at the um, Roach Jones Step House outside and up close and not up close far away and in person, I guess that's what you say, socially distanced and in person, not up close in person. Um, and so if you'd like to join us um, uh, second Wednesday at noon, we would love to have you. I'm sure that people will be, yes. we can set you up at a table so you can do like, you know, five minute um, speed advice kinds of things. Sure. During yep. the meeting. That would be great. Sure, I'd be happy to. I already have it on my calendar. And oh, also um, my email is on the website, but I'll put it here one more time just for you all to have. Um, we've got a few minutes, um, and part of this meeting was supposed to be to go kind of around and talk about any programming or any plans that you have coming up. And if anybody wants to speak up to that, raise your hand and unmute yourself and go. Can I um, speak up yes. on behalf of Amy DeRocher of Destination New Bedford? So Amy was going to join us today and she could not, she had a pet emergency. So, um, she is the marketing manager in the city's tourism and marketing department. And so on behalf of Amy, I am going to encourage everyone. Some of you are already doing this. Some of you did it before the pandemic and may have gotten out of the habit of doing this. But this summer, there's going to be a lot of wonderful events happening in New Bedford. And so the if you google new bedford events the number one selection is destination new bedford so people are going to destination new bedford events page to find out what is available to them for events this summer so highly encourage everyone to continue doing that start doing that um the other calendar is New Bedford Creatives calendar. That is the number two Google choice if you do New Bedford events. Um, we we are we're still trying. We were going to merge with Destination New Bedford for that events page, so we became one conglomerate. It's not looking too pretty on our website right now, so we're working out those kinks. Um, the other is New Bedford Light has a calendar page. 
And for training and development, you can add your events to New Bedford Source Link, which is a resource for entrepreneurs and small businesses in New Bedford. The final thing that I'd like to say is on Facebook, if you have Facebook events, you can add both Destination New Bedford and New Bedford Creative as co-hosts. And if you're on an AHA night, add AHA as a co-host. And then that um, automatically populates your event in our Facebook pages and gets you a little bit more visibility than just doing your own. Um, so I highly recommend that. And I will, um, Lee, do you have anything to add to that? I was just going to say that um, co-branding co and co-sponsoring has really been powerful. If you've looked at all the information that's coming out from South Coast Spring Arts Week, which we're in the middle right now, it's the first kind of big collaboration of the season. Um, it's gotten such good press and, um, and people are really mentioning that it's part of South Coast Spring Arts. So I would encourage people to think not only of their um, excellence as individual presenters, but to think about collaborative programs that are happening around this because it helps everyone, the rising tide. Um, floats all boats higher and um, more in more stability. So let's work together. No, so um, I, in my season, in my calendar, it's Dawn is on the, the upper left. So you're first, and then we'll go with Dawn, uh, Allison, Eric, and Wendy. So Dawn, you're on. I'm, I'm mute yourself. Thanks. Um, I'm unmuted. I think. <laughs> um, I so it's actually perfect that the Whaling Museum was presenting about their rental rates because unknowingly and about the same time we were looking at for the same reasons our rental rates um, for most of the nonprofits that we've been working with it's been the exact same thing and it wasn't who you talk to but it was like wheeling and dealing and what's your budget and you know and it, it really is it's not fair it's not transparency it's not it's not equitable for us to be kind of you know, not having a consistent approach to our rental. So we were looking for a more consistent approach, which gives you a much easier answer. It's more efficient. And it, it, it means that Eric's being treated the same way that Mandy's being treated. And, and, and so our goals were also to not make any money off of you all. Um, we just now have a consistent pricing rate, which we never had before, unlike the Whaling Museum. So it's draft form. It's a pilot. I say that. So if, if you experience these new rates, they're not published yet because they're they were still kind of in final draft stages. Our discount will be like 50% off because 80% would be like 20 bucks. <laughs> so we also are really just literally covering our costs. Um, our tent costs us like $7,000 a year just to have up and, you know, on and on insurance. So just covering costs. We wanted to make it really affordable for you all. Um, you know, if it's truly your event and not more of a partnership, which we still have all of those things um, where we're delivering collaborative programming, that's nothing to do with rentals. So um, I'm very interested in your feedback, you know, as a pilot of these new rates, you can um, let us know if you're one of the groups using the new rates, um, let us know how it's going and because it's very changeable. Um, and we just want to, my board even back this, they said it's important to be a community partner. So that is definitely our aim in that. Um, I just want to add our, our programs this summer are largely partnerships. And when I looked at the list, um, we have programs that we're collaborating with Third Eye and the National Park on. We're working with a collective. Uh, we're working with Reverie Theater, doing our Shakespeare series again, New Bedford uh, Free Public Library, the Buy Black event is coming back on Juneteenth, um, which was a huge success last year. And um, your theater's having several performances here. Um, so I won't go into detail, but you know, it's all on our website and I hope you'll you know, come enjoy because I know I will be. Um, and the last thing I'll just plug is June 11th is our annual fundraiser. Everyone I think out there has their annual fundraiser. We did a two tier system this year. So um, there's the there's two price points and we were hoping that that made it more accessible for some, you know, that, you know, frankly don't want to pay 130 bucks for a ticket to, you know, to a food and drink event. So hope to see you all there. I'll pass. Yep. Thanks. Um, so Allison, how about you? 
Hi, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Sometimes I have issues with my things. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm Allison. I'm the program uh, person at New Bedford Fishing Heritage Center. Um, I just wanted to plug some of our May events since we are in May and we're looking for uh, to put those out there. So our biggest one, I think, is that we're partnering, partnering with um, Cinema New Bedford to show this movie called Yoram at the Zyterium. So it's free. The movie is uh, the first feature film in Scots Gaelic. So it's, it's super interesting. It's about the, the fishing community in um, Scotland's Outer Hebrides. So you can buy the tickets on the Z's website or um, through their uh, box office. I also want to point out um, on that same day, so this is next Tuesday the 17th, at noon we're having a Meet the Director um, Zoom. So you can talk with uh, Alistair Cole and find out behind the scenes about uh, what he's got to say about the movie. Um, and then the showing is that same day at 7 p.m. at the Z. Uh, and then lastly, I do want to mention we're having a uh, Scottish folk band North Sea Gas come back to New Bedford finally. <laughs> um, and they're going to be playing on the 26th here at the center at um, 7. So again, all of you know, all that information is on our website. Um, which is fishingheritagecenter.org. We have the Facebook too. Each one has a Facebook event. We're on, we're on all the calendars. You know, I've, I've been working <laughs> to get it out there. But if anybody has questions, you can email me. I'll put my email. Um, programs at fishingheritage, which I spelled wrong. Um, if you want to email me about any questions or if you have uh, any comments. <laughs> Thanks, Allison. Um, so, um, Eric, you're next. So, your theater has continued its uh, live events uh, starting this weekend, uh, May 13th. Uh, a play called The Shape of Things runs for two weekends. Um, and we're running two matinees every weekend now, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, so, we've discontinued Thursday performances and we're loading them up on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, so check that out. It's a modern show, black box style, um, modern, um, uh, modern set construction and everything. It's really interesting. And we've got a brand new director, very experienced theater uh, uh, veteran, but uh, new to directing. So we're really excited to see what he, he can put together. Um, Jazz Fest, New Bedford Jazz Fest, our 10th uh, kind of anniversary show is going to be this year. We don't have an official date yet. It's not going to be in June like we normally have it, um, but it is in the works. So we're really excited about that. And uh, Steeple Playhouse, it's going. Um, we actually have sheetrock on all the new walls. Um, we've got the electric service coming in. Uh, the heat has been connected. It has heat again. So that's a huge step. Um, so, uh, so speaking of all these, these venue rentals, I mean, we're, we're really excited to be on the list of, of options that people will have downtown for, uh, partnering and resident companies and, uh, and rentals, whether they're for-profit or nonprofit or individuals. So, uh, I yield my time. Um, so before you yield your time, when are you going to be ready to go? When does Steeple Playhouse officially open? <laughs> I didn't hear that. Did I hear that. Are we going into a recession? Is <laughs> inflation going to continue to go up? These are questions that burn in the in the minds of all of us that no one has the answer to. Uh, no, I I mean right now the current goal is winter, maybe as late as next spring. Um, but uh, it really just depends on supply chain issues and whether or not uh, we can get the things that we need to finish. Plus, we've got the last round of the capital campaign going on. So depending on what happens with ARPA funds, um, other uh, grants we're going for, including mass cultural, council cultural facilities um, and our final capital campaign. Plus, we have a buy a brick campaign going on right now for the, for the walkway leading up to the main entrance. So if you're interested in getting your name in, uh, in, in lights uh, or on the ground rather, um, look at Whale and Your Theater's website um, for that Buy a Brick campaign. Okay, great, thanks. So, um, Wendy, you're up. Hello, hello. <laughs> so, uh, New Bedford Festival Theater is in progress um, in pre-production for Disney's Beauty and the Beast, 
this summer on the stage of the Zyterian. Uh, we open July 22nd and run through the 31st. Uh, we have an amazing cast, uh, some people coming in from New York, Boston. We have several local performers. Um, we're hugely excited and it will be our first return back to a big show in two years um, because of COVID. We've been shut down in the summer for two years. So, so we're back at it um, just like it's 2019. <laughs> <And> <laughs> we also have a summer academy. Um, it's a tuition free uh, technical training arts program for local teens from four to 14 to 18. Um, they work on the show in various aspects, uh, costumes, lighting, uh, sound, and uh, they are given a stipend at the end of their four weeks. So unlike almost every teenage arts program out there, instead of them paying us, we pay them and we take great pride in that. Uh, we are, the application deadline is May 27th. And so if you know a young person who is interested in the arts, um, please send them our way. I'll put the, uh, the link in the chat for more information when I'm done talking. We are also looking for two college age interns. So if you know um, any college students who have the summer off who are interested in arts administration, um, these are also paid positions. Um, and um, I think I think that's it. You know, we're we're going full force and really excited to be back. Oh, and also we are uh, to tag on to uh, Dawn's June 11th um, uh, uh, fundraising annual event. Uh, Festival Theater will be providing entertainment at that event. So uh, if you're there on June 11th, you'll see some of our performers. And um, if anyone has uh, uh, events coming up uh, that they need performers for, um, please contact me and I'd be happy to set uh, something up for you. Great. Thanks, Wendy. Okay, Dan, you're up. Sorry, I had to unmute. My phone was ringing before. Um, <clears throat> yes, uh, practice best practices. Next workshop is coming up. If you're in speaker mode, you can probably read this. Um, over there, <laughs> but um, we're going to be um, doing a one on pay equity and justice for freelancers. Um, it's um, going to include uh, Eric Estevez from um, the Lenny Zakem Fund, representing a funder's perspective. Uh, we have um, Nirali Patel from uh, uh, the Greater Boston Legal Services on uh, issues of what is and what is not a um, legal uh, freelancer versus uh, must be an employee. Uh, I'm going to be presenting the research on how you actually calculate out what works out to minimum wage, uh, uh, professional wage, um, uh, <clears throat> teaser, it's higher than you think. Um, and um, you can find more details. I put the link to the workshop in the uh, chat so you can find more details there. It's going to be on June 29th. Um, <clears throat> and we hope that uh, it's designed for organizations and freelancers and funders. So we're hoping that uh, some of the folks from the, um, from the uh, Southeast um, Foundation will come. We're hoping some of your organizations will uh, have representatives there. <clears throat> you can register for it now. It is free. Um, we are looking for a person from an organization that hires freelancers who would like to be on the panel representing that point of view. Uh, so far, we have had no luck um, to find somebody who actually wants to be that, uh, that person. Um, <clears throat> and one of the better things is that in the course of doing this research for this, which came out of um, COVID-19 stuff, um, I developed a calculator, which we will be distributing that night um, and make available afterwards, um, where you can simply plug in a, a hourly rate you would like to pay a freelancer and see what it would translate to if you were hiring that person. Um, and um, it'll be editable for people who are freelancers so that they can put in actual costs. We've used estimated costs from the um, MIT's Living Wage Project. Um, <clears throat> some things are fixed, other things are not, like your healthcare um, are not. So you can, you'll be able to change that kind of stuff. So um, we think this is gonna be a really good one for um, a wide range of people. Um, we wanna see people um, starting to get um, <clears throat> paid so that at least they're, they're doing well. Um, and um, we hope that this will help make that happen. 
Um, <clears throat> we're also talking with some other organizations who are working on, um, on <clears throat> uh, pay justice um, with um, funders, and we're hoping to become a bigger part of that as well. So um, <clears throat> hopefully see, we'll see you then. Oh, great. Thanks, Ben. If you have um, any questions, let me know. Is your, did you put your um, email in the chat? Uh, my email was in the chat before. I did put the link to, um, to the workshop, but I'll put my email back in the chat again. Okay, great. So Lee Blake, you're up. Lee Blake? I am unmuting hey. myself. How are you all? Good to see you. I put some information in the chat. The Historical Society is going to be organizing programs throughout the summer for our Sailing to Freedom, which we've been doing actually for 12 years. Uh, this year, uh, we were able to land a very large grant and we have an exhibit at the Whaling Museum, Sailing to Freedom, the dimensions, the maritime dimensions of the Underground Railroad that'll be there all summer long. Uh, it is technically slated to be at the Whaling Museum until the end of October. For us, we also have the Sailing to Freedom teachers from around the country. We have 80 teachers from around the country who will be visiting in two weeks in July. So we always bring those teachers to the various uh, nonprofit organizations that are related historically to the Underground Railroad. So our classes take place at the library, at the Whaling Museum, at the Roach Jones Duff House, and at the Friends Meeting House. So people get to see our history from a very different viewpoint. And many of the people that we have this year are from the Midwest, which is always fascinating where people come from. So we'll be doing that. We also will be holding a series of lectures and talks on the Underground Railroad until November. So all of that, as we um, book our speakers and everything, all of that will be on our website. But I wanted to offer the opportunity to people to think about programs that you might wanna do on the Underground Railroad. Now that could be a lecture or a talk with us. That could be a, a book talk. Maybe there's a book William Still's book on the Underground Railroad. Maybe you want to read um, Catherine Grover's book, The Fugitive Gibraltar, as a group. But it would be a way, first of all, to tie into what's going on with the Underground Railroad for the month of September and to work with us, the National Park, and a lot of other partners who are being focused around the country and around the world. And of course, we're sailors, so we're sailing from New Bedford to ports around the world, bringing people who are freedom seekers to those areas. So it's an opportunity and you can talk to me about it if you like. And that's my spiel. <laughs> As always, Lee, thank you so much. So I think it's Kathy Tregula who's up next from um, Little People's College. Thanks, Lee. Hi, everybody. I'm sorry, my video won't work. I shut it off to eat my lunch and it won't go back on. So there you go. <laughs> I put something in the chat regarding um, Little People's also received a grant for the summer and we want to do an art program. So we're looking for two art instructors. It's a six week program. It's only in the mornings, Monday through Thursday. Um, we're putting a salary range of 25 to 30. Uh, we, it doesn't have to be someone who's a teacher but just someone who can work well with children and, um, and has some experience in art. We'd like to introduce the children to different types of um, art medium each week, you know, maybe pastels one week or clay one week. So once we hire the artist uh, instructor, then we can work with them to decide what the curriculum is gonna look like for those six weeks. So if you know anybody that's looking for something this summer, please send them my way. I put my email and there's also a link for a job inquiry, but if they reach out to me directly, it will be a lot easier and quicker. And if anyone has any questions, please let me know. I'm um, great, thanks, Kathy. Um, Don Burton, Thank you. you are up next. Hey, everybody. Um, I'm here representing downtown to Bedford Inc. today. Um, and we have upcoming on May 21st, the uh, second annual DMB Shop Small Crawl. It'll be uh, May 21st, Saturday from 11 to four. So this is an opportunity to support local small privately owned businesses. Um, 
There's 30 plus locally owned shops participating and you know, uh, special offers, exclusive uh, events, things happening within the shops. And um, you can think of this almost like a, uh, like a pub crawl, but only for shopping. Um, so it, along those lines, if you do shop at five you know, participating locations, there's a chance to win a $100 gift certificate to your favorite Eat DNB restaurant, things like that are happening. Um, so that's our, our, our event coming up in a couple of weeks. And then just on top of that, we have the uh, DMB guide and map that are in the works right now. So that'll be coming out um, first, you know, since just before the pandemic. So that'll be great. Um, so keep an eye out for that. If you have any questions, um, best way to find out about the, the crawl is to uh, go, you know, sign up for our, uh, our email. Uh, but also on Instagram. So it's at DNB Inc. And we'll be putting out a number of things that are coming up. And oh, just a shout out to um, Mass Cultural Council and NB Creative for helping us fund that. So thank you so much. That's it. So um, I don't see any hands up. Erin, um, let's see, from... Um... Buzzards Bay Coalition. Erin? Oh, Erin, there I see you. Hi. Erin's hey. one of the people I also met during the pandemic who wasn't here before but has joined us since. So um, say a little bit about that in addition to your programs. Yes, of course. So I just wanted to uh, say hello to everyone that I know on here uh, and introduce myself. My name is Erin. I am the outreach assistant at the Buzzards Bay Coalition. So I am a Dartmouth native who spent some time in New York. And then after being locked in a one bedroom apartment for three months in the spring of 2020, decided it was time to come home. So I'm very happy to be here and to be able to work to help preserve and protect the Bay. So a couple of events we have coming up, uh, we have our uh, 2020 or 2022 Buzzards Bay swim on Saturday, June 18th. If you have any friends that are aquatically inclined and would like to join the swim. It's a really fun event. It's an awesome morning. We start at Cisco Brewers and everybody swims across the bay into Fort Phoenix and Fairhaven. So if you know any folks that want to sign up, uh, it's just savebuzzardsbay.org slash swim. I'll pop it in the chat. Um, and we also have a really fun event. It'll be the release party for our collaboration with Buzzards Bay Brewing. We do a beer with them called Sow and Pigs. And the release party for that is at the Buzzards Bay Brewery on June 10th. So that's really fun. I also wanted to just plug the free Bay Adventures that we have at the Coalition every month. We do about eight of them per month. They're absolutely free. And it is a great way to get out and explore parts of the Bay that you might not be familiar with necessarily. Uh, we have some great ones for kids that are called Itty Bitty Explorers that are really adorable, very fun. Uh, we have some for adults that are, you know, like a moonlight kayak paddle on Onset Bay and Wareham, just really fun stuff like that. So feel free to check out our website just say buzzardsbay.org and you can find out all the good fun freeness. And that's Great. all I got. I'm actually signed up for your um, Buzzards Bay kayak paddle. Oh, good. Oh, excellent. Go enjoy it for me because the two babies won't let me paddle with you. I know the other thing about Erin is um, she's also a mother of twins. She had twins when she came back to New Bedford. So we, we share that also. And we yeah. support her for being out in the world and raising twins. <laughs> um, anybody else have questions? Margo, do you have last thoughts? I would like to just quickly pop in and drop them oh. from the museum again, just to quickly, I will go fast because I know we're running out of time, no, 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 talk good. about the programming that we have coming up. Um, so on tomorrow night, like we talked about earlier, we will have the museum open. The lower level galleries will be available from four o'clock to seven o'clock. So we are going an hour before the museum closes just to allow more people. Um, so four to 7 p.m., our lower level galleries will be open, including the um, Spirit of Domingo Rebello's exhibition. Um, that's one of our biggest ones right now. So that's in the Wallace Family Gallery. Um, and then we will also have our local history guild lecture that will be online again. So you can look to that. Um, and then next Thursday, we quickly talked about this 
too um, with Lee earlier, but Lee Blake and Tim Walker have been working with the museum for the Sailing to Freedom exhibition that will be opening on that Thursday. There will also be a lecture that is taking place with Marcus Redeker. Um, the title of the presentation is The Overseas Freeway, Maritime Workers and Fugitives in the Struggle Against Slavery. So that will take place that Thursday. So there'll be the reception, the exhibition viewing 6 to 6.45, and then 6.45 to 7.45, 8 o'clock. Um, that will be the lecture that takes place with Marcus. So you can go ahead and sign up for that. Um, it is a ticketed event, but you can do it virtually or in person. Both links are on our website and on our calendar, so you can go to that. Um, and then I'm going to stop there so we don't jump ahead to June because of time. <laughs> no, we, we're actually, these meetings are supposed to last till 1.30. So if you have other things you want to say for June, oh. you're welcome to say them. Okay, great. Um, so June 2nd, so not too far away, we have the Shattuck exhibition opening. Um, so that will be on a Thursday evening. It will have a light reception, 5 to 6 o'clock. And then the following Thursday, which also happens to be AHA, um, is Thursday, June 9th, a horse, uh, Henry Hornstein's exhibition opening. Um, so that will also be taking place. More details about what those exhibition openings are are on our website for upcoming. So if you're interested to see what those are, you can go to that. Um, and I will also have a reception 5 to 6 p.m. with both programs having a brief speaking program about 5 to 10 minutes with the artist um, and likely our curatorial department. Um, and then June 23rd, most of you, or not most of you, but some of you might know of this, but the New Bedford Lyceum will be taking place. We haven't published that information just yet. We will be shortly. We are waiting on um, our speakers team to get us a little bit more detailed information. I have followed up with them for those of you that are on the life team committee. I followed up yesterday, so still waiting on that. Um, but that will be with Mari Kilpenny. So this is hot off the press information. She is a young advocate and philanthropist, um, and she calls herself the future president. Um, she is 14 years old. She is from Flint, Michigan, and one of her biggest advocacies was for the Flint water crisis. She's created her own water filter with a company. She has gone to the Women's March in Washington. She's spoke and wrote, written a letter to President Obama. Um, so she's a real big advocate um, for community issues, but also national issues. Um, and she's a great youth activist. And so we want to highlight and go through the lens of youth. Um, sorry, we want to go through the lens of getting our youth to advocate for things that they're passionate about. And so we're bringing in Mari for her to, you know, talk about all the work that she's done to hope and hope to spark some interest in our own youth and our community. And so it doesn't necessarily have to be one specific cause that we focus, we focus on, but we want whatever that youth um, or our young community, whatever they're interested in, to go ahead and advocate and get involved and do the work. Um, so we will have her here. Um, it will be in person. She'll be flying in Thursday, June 23rd. More details to come specifically about what her talk will be. Um, and we are looking to have a panel panel discussion afterwards or before um, that's still being worked out. So if you know of anybody from the community that would be interested, doesn't have to be adults, we are looking again for our youth to be involved. So we might have a new Bedford Whaling Museum High School apprentice take part. We want Mari to take part. But of course, we are looking at also issues that are taking place within our community as well as nationally. So if you have a representative of a, um, a situation that's going on that you feel might you know of somebody who might have a good um, background in that to be on the panel, we are very open to that. So any thoughts, send them to myself, um, jnews at whalingmuseum.org. Um, and I, and then, oh, sorry, one more for June. Uh, June 30th, we will wrap up with um, the Lucifone Portuguese, and, sorry, the Portuguese and Lucifone World Lecture Series. Um, it will be the third lecture in the series. The topic is TBD, but it will be with Frank Gaspar. So if you're part of the Portuguese community or you want to be part of it, um, feel free to take part in that lecture. It will be hybrid, so it will be in person as well as online. There are a lot of information. So if you have any questions, of course, always email. Oh, that's great. So um, I think that Michelle Keith is back in line to um, speak a little bit. And then Connie, 
Um, Eric, your hand is up. I don't know if you mean to have it. Up. Okay, so we'll come back to you. So Michelle. Hold on. I, so Lee, um, Lindsay Compton from the National Park also, she can't figure out how to raise her hand. So she'll go oh. after. Okay, so we'll do. And um, Eric, Eric, you, we're gonna push you back to the end since you've already gone. <laughs> Okay, so it's Michelle and then Connie and then Lindsay and then Eric. Okay, go. Hi, Michelle. lovely, lovely to talk to see all of you today and hear all of these fantastic plans. This is just an observation. I'm wondering, it's just been so phenomenal listening to everybody's plans and these upcoming events. Has, I'm not sure if you've done this, but have you done like a little sort of podcast, a quick audio that's on the different sites, some sort of way of getting this news out to the community via the podcast medium, because a lot of people don't read these days, unfortunately, and they don't necessarily go looking, but if they can hear, if they can go to the site and they can say, these are our upcoming uh, events and opportunities in our community, they may listen to that. Uh, it's just an observation, but a fabulous. I'm so excited about the summer. Everybody's been doing fantastic work and it would be great. I would love other people to hear everything that you're saying. Well, that's very reinforcing, Michelle. And if anybody has any thoughts about how to do that or to organize it, I think we're all in. It's the organizational piece, you know, it's the, and the distribute, but distribution, I think we could do, it's the organizational piece. So let's put that in the parking lot as a great idea. I, I think it would be good. Uh, we'll go to Connie. Um, and see what she's doing. Hi, Connie from the New Bedford Symphony Orchestra. I put uh, something in the chat about our lunchtime concerts, which started today. <laughs> um, obviously, everyone was here, so they weren't able to attend. Hopefully, you can go tomorrow or Friday, uh, right in the lobby of the DeMello International Center, where our office is, the Union Street entrance. Uh, Yaniv, our conductor, who everyone loves, will be there playing piano tomorrow and talking about the music for the concert this weekend, Prohibition, which is celebrating the Roaring Twenties. And then on Friday, uh, Emmy and the Peas, um, Emmy and Peter are both principal musicians for the NBSO and they're joined by uh, Piero, Emmy's husband. And they're a great group with fiddle music and just high energy, lots of fun. So that's part of South Coast Spring Art. So hopefully everybody can stop by. We have our Prohibition concert uh, Saturday night at the Z. Um, 7.30 with Yaniv and Elena Shadow is our guest uh, singer. Then also this summer, uh, we will be partnering with Cape Verdean Association again for Junta Mon, and that'll be in the Island Park on a Christian Avenue. Uh, there'll be MBSO musicians and Cape Verdean musicians and family activities. Um, that was a great partnership last year. So really looking forward to doing that again. Um, in June, we have our benefit concert for Ukraine, and that will be a full classical concert with the orchestra at the Z on June 18th, 7.30 p.m. Um, all summer, we are partnering with the drawing room again for Sonata Saturdays, and those are free outdoor concerts with MBSO ensembles. And they're the fourth Saturday of the month, May through October, and they're from four to 6 p.m. And uh, lastly, we have a summer camp put on by our youth orchestra, Southeastern Massachusetts Youth Orchestra. And that summer camp is for kids uh, who have completed grade five through age 17. And it will be July 25th to the 29th at UMass Dartmouth, nine to three all day. And then they'll do a performance at 3 p.m. on Friday. I'm sure we'll be having uh, more free concerts out in the community this summer. We usually do, but um, we uh, still planning. So lots going on at the MBSO as usual. So um, come back to our June meeting and tell us more of the details for the summer because the outdoor concerts are so great. That would be fun. Thank you. So uh, who's next? Is it um, Art Museum or Lindsay? Who did we say? I'll jump in really quick. Mine, mine's short. Um, and I'm a dinosaur. I literally could not figure out how to keep my hand raised. I really, I like did five different hand gestures and none of them stayed. So not sure how to do that still. Um, so thank you, Margo. Um, three things, um, our artisan residence applications are open for residencies in 2023. The application um, call will close at the end of August. So there's still plenty of time for people to apply. 
but please spread the word. Um, our application is a little bit intensive, so folks should not wait until August to apply. Um, and if anybody has questions, please um, feel free to reach out. Our current artist in residence, Kate Sheridan, is an illustrator and digital artist, comic book maker. Tomorrow night, Kate will be offering a youth comics crash course, which is free and open to all youth. Um, you do not have to have any drawing experience to participate, and you will receive um, some art supplies if you show up. The first 15 will receive art supplies, let me say that. Um, and then we are offering the same course for adults, no experience necessary. Also, if you are a very skilled artist, you can come too. Um, for adults, it'll be Saturday, May 21st um, from 2 to 3.30. Um, and adults will also receive free art supplies, a sketchbook, um, pens, pencils, and a little tote bag to carry all that stuff. Um, June 9th, Kate will be offering a program um, in the makerspace about queerness censorship and queerness in comic books um, for June Pride. We'll also have Five Pillars that night and the Block Party, um, so more details forthcoming. And uh, lastly, a program we're really excited about is a youth arts program, which we'll be offering over 10, Saturday, 10 Saturdays this summer. Um, it starts on June 25th and goes through August 27th. It'll be at 10.30 in the morning every Saturday, June 25th through August 27th. Um, I'm actually looking for folks, both performing and visual artists, to lead workshops during those Saturdays. Um, I will be leading some of them, but also kids will get tired of looking at me for 10 Saturdays. So I would love to have other people join in and offer great things. So if you're a musician and you want to come and do some kind of fun thing or a photographer or whatever kind of artist you are, please reach out if you would like to get involved with that program. And that's all I have. Thanks for listening. And thank you all for staying on uh, until 1.30. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Lindsay. So um, the art museum, and then we'll round up with Eric, I guess. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Michelle Borges, the education programs manager at NBAM. I um, just want to mention a few things. So, um, you know, we'll be continuing to be open um, AHA nights from four to seven this Thursday. We're offering our uh, Clay on Wheels program, which is uh, sponsored by the Wicked Cool Places grant. And essentially any youth or um, adults that come to the museum um, can try their hands at using a, a pottery wheel. Um, and we also are gonna have stations set up with uh, model magic so that people can create um, like mini sculptures. Um, it's all free. And um, I also wanted to, I'm oh, sorry, that's from 4.30 to 6.30. Um, I also wanted to plug the citywide art show uh, for New Bedford uh, schools is happening on um, Thursday as well from 4 to 7 on County Street, uh, 455 County Street. Uh, I mentioned it because I was one of the judges, so I saw it all on Monday, and it was uh, it's really a great exhibition. I mean, there's so much work from all the kids, you know, elementary to high, so it's really it's fantastic. Some people should check it out. Um, there's a bunch of stuff I've written down on my tiny post-it here. Um, so June the 20 MI2 event. Um, I was talking with Dina from the co-creative. I know she had to hop off, but um, we were talking about bringing clay on wheels uh, for that event as well um, and collaborating with co-creative. So I just have to reach out to Beatrice Oliveira to get that all like on the website. Um, and then for the 20 MI2 event, there's also on the 11th from 12 to four, we were kind of collaborate with the community boating center an Azorian heritage organization to um, have a program for kids. Um, we do have some stuff going on with uh, summer camps as well, like other organizations, teen art weeks and things for youth. So I'll, I'll can pop that into the chat. Um, and yeah, I'll have more to talk about in, in June when we meet again. <laughs> but okay, thank you all. <laughs> hey, Eric, take us out. You're on you unmute yourself. Sometimes the space bar works, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Uh, so your theater does a lot of training in the theater arts, and we have a free training this time in stage manage uh, stage management. Uh, this is going to be a hybrid training. Some of it's uh, Zoom, some of it is in person, and there's going to be some hands-on experience in our theater as part of that process. And then you'll also be able to have an option to team up with a stage manager in one of our future productions. Um, so exciting that we're getting our classes back up and running. And that's it. That's, that's great. So um, I do want to say a word because um, Beatrice isn't on this um, Zoom. So there's the 20 MI2 event. It, it starts on the night that's AHA night. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, Pride night that is both the block party and then other events that other people are doing around MI2. And then it continues over the weekend. And so it's really, aside from AHA night, tomorrow night, it's really the next big, huge opening collaborative event. So I hope that people look for information. It's very exciting. It's a real aspirational piece to get all of the city involved. So um, keep your ears open and, and look for information on that. And that's all I have. Margaret. Really quick. Oh yeah, good. Um, there were a lot of wonderful programs spoken about during the meeting that you did not send me the info on. So if you have not sent me the info of the lovely programs that you talked about today, please send that to me so I can share those with everybody in writing um, after this meeting. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, Lindsay. And I'll add to that that it, the reason it's so important to get that list to Lindsay is that New Bedford Creative is is launching into a citywide campaign, arts and culture campaign this summer. It's part of our Creating Connection initiative with Arts Midwest. So we have resources to send photographers and videographers to many of these events. I'm not promising all of them, but we want to get, uh, we want to capture as much of these events as possible for this campaign. So this is the time to send, this is June, July, August uh, is when we'll be out with our teams capturing all of this. So send it to Lindsay and uh, we'll, Jasmine and I will compile it and uh, build out uh, that team. So thank you everyone for, for staying and being here today. Lee, I'm sending it back to you. Um, thanks. So um, my thanks also for people to be here. And the next time we see you, it'll be in person. It'll be so exciting. It's the first quarterly meeting. And the Rhodes Jones Duff has um, graciously offered to host us. And so that is June 8th. It's a Wednesday at noon. Bring your own lunch. We'll provide snacks, um, some treats. Um, but it'll be great. The, the garden should be in perfect shape at the RJD. So it's really a pleasure. And if you haven't been... Um, you need to see the RJD and it's a great time to visit for all the new people. So other than that, see ya, it's been great.